Hi, Three Wheels Around the World. <laughs> we got some show for you tonight. Hit it. Three Wheeling Around the World. Two minutes, start line. We're all ready to go. Buy the sport, for the sport. I don't want to do anything else but race the TT course. Oh, we're about to witness TT history being made again. If you're really, really keen and you want to get involved in uh, the promotion of our great sport, then become an ambassador. Take photos and post them on our fan page. Two wheels are good, three wheelers better. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, guys. Oh, we're back again. Yeah. So uh, we have our uh, star here. You know, everybody in the sport uh, knows uh, Klaus Klaffenbach, of course, uh, you know, Claffy is the real name, right? We have to use Claffy, right? <laughs> so everybody, you guys all all know about Klaus. So he's, we're, we're going to get into it. We're going to have a great night. It's going to be a great one tonight, right? Right, Klaus? And then next to him is uh, Andy Farragher. He's one of our local Manxies, <laughs> right? And you you guys all remember him from the uh, movie, right? Huh? Great friends, you two guys, right? Absolutely. But, but uh, it gets a little bit involved here, you know, like with Andy and everything, because he's been around uh, so much in the sport here on the island. Like I said, you know, he, he was in the, the movie, right? But you, you, you'll most likely remember him. He was doing a lot of the uh, administration and management, I'd say, for, uh, for Molly, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what you're doing. But but wait, wait. But if you remember the movie, right? I think in there we were saying about you guys, uh, you know, a friendship that you have with Klaus, though, too. Right? So we're all kind of like intertwined here, you know. In any case, I'll leave it at that. Enough of my, <laughs> my talking and yakking here. So you, uh, go ahead and tell us how you started off here. You two guys, how you, how you know each other. And uh, yeah. Well... <clears throat> How I got involved in sidecar racing was I used to motocross and at the end of my career and it wasn't a great one I had, I had success in sand racing because it was speed and there was no jumps in them days and I had injuries and I really enjoyed it but I got too old and I needed, after I packed up I just needed something extreme to do I looked at road racing and I looked at solos and it wasn't for me and I went to Derby and watched the sidecars, and I thought, ah, I want to get involved with that. That is an extreme, seeing the bikes sliding and squirming, and yeah. I just wanted to get involved with it. Yeah. That's how I got involved with sidecar racing. I was involved with Nick Crow, and then Klaus come along. <clears throat> Me and Nick had split up, and Klaus come along. And I admired him. He was next world champion. I didn't even know him. But I thought, he's putting his world championship on the line to come to the TT. And I thought to myself, he doesn't know what he's going to let himself in for here. <laughs> you know? And I met him, and we just seemed to hit it off. He didn't know anybody on the island. He does now. He's like a manx, you know. But at the time, he didn't know where to get anything fixed, where to go and buy anything. And I sort of helped him, and our friendship grew, and we've been massive friends ever since. Oh, yeah. What year are we talking about now? So he's, he's going back some time. Yeah. I don't know the year. I Do you remember the year? First of all, Chris, thanks for having us tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we were looking, uh, looking forward to tonight. You, oh. know? you know what, though? I have to tell everybody the one thing here. I, 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 I like that we just said there, uh, Klaus, because uh, we're all good friends. That's what it is. We're, we hang out together. You know, so it's not like some kind of like distance like interview or anything yeah. like that. And we're all in the sport. We all have we, a good time. And, you know, we I, all... I, I remember when we, I would say we, you and me started that three wheeling thing years and years ago. You know, I spend a lot of time in with you in the gym, you know, oh, in your yeah. own gym. And uh, when we had this oh, idea yeah. and we grew ideas and you showed me that um, Schwarzenegger film oh, yeah. and you said, yeah, oh. yeah. That could be like the guideline we, we, we do our film, you know? And then, uh, yeah, that was a great oh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah but back to my first time on the other man, you know, is uh, I became world champion in 2001. 
Psycho world champion. And then I carry, <coughs> carry on for two more years until 2003. And then I thought I need a new, I need something new, you know. New I, challenge. New, new challenge. Oh, yeah. And, um, and by then, there wasn't like all the social media stuff on you. You know, I, I heard from my dad because he was a big into uh, sidecars and he always telling me about the Isle of Man. I wasn't really interested in, but then I thought I'd look into the, the Isle of Man thing. And then I've seen some uh, videos on like uh, cassettes, you know, not, not, not even DVDs, you know. Cassette, watched it cassettes. On, on cassettes, you know. Cassettes. Yeah. 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 And I thought that could be something for me. So I, I, I decided to go to go racing at the Alaman TT, you know. Oh yeah. And then made some plans and soon we found out it's not it's not easy to do it because it's very complicated first of all to get there and and how 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 to do it with, with getting a permission for starting permission. It wasn't it wasn't that easy that it is now. You'd also change from an F one to an F two, didn't you? Oh yeah. It's we a had, big change. We had to change, oh, yeah. had to change the bike. Had to change the bike. And as well it was difficult to find a bike. I remember I found a damaged crashed bike in Belgium. I knew about this bike. Next day jumped in the van, drove to Belgium, bought that crash bike. And uh, find out it was an, an old Molly bike. Mm -hmm. So fixed that bike, did like on a parking space, did a, a, a test run into the, the Sprinter van. Oh, yeah. And drove over to the Alamant. <laughs> Whoa. She just got so to we, arrived, we arrived just the day, day before the first practice. Never been around the circuit. <laughs> Never been around the circuit. And then I honestly, I had a shock. Mm. I had a shock, but seeing it from a distance now <clears throat> must have been one of the best things I've done in my life next to become a dad, you know. Yeah. That is, was absolutely mega. And it done the way in my life after that, after that you know. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, first of all, I was trying to win, to win, to win. It took me a few years with a lot of help from Andy. Because that's when we got friendly. Because, of course, we had problems. <clears throat> because we, we don't we don't know how to prepare a bike for a TT, you know. And then we had loads and loads of troubles. And then when I met Andy, and I think I nearly every day have was on the phone and said, Andy, where we can fix that? Where we can fix that? Where, where can I get a welder? Where can I do this? Where can I do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, need that, but you need a good so, uh, for that. And then yeah. he said to me afterwards, he goes, how do you know everybody? I said, because I'm local. <laughs> yeah. I know everybody. That's the way yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All of our folks around the world, yeah. Farragher. There's a lot of Farraghers on the <laughs> Right? That's that's a local guy. We call them Manxies. Yeah. But I know, all, know, the, I know all the local businesses, the welders, you know, the... Yeah, the I know nuts, everybody. Bolts, you know. Um. And um, we got the goal, mm. you know, and uh, yeah, it was it was great. It was a great time. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah well, on the way there, we had a guy called Chris Mayhew doing our engines. He's probably the best Honda engineer yeah, at least, in the world. At least he he know how to fix it, how to fix an engine for TT. Yeah, that's he, what he, the yeah, Birchall yeah, Birchall still use it now. Yeah, tuner. Yeah, he built engines for Klaus. Every one of ours blew up. Not his problem. <clears throat> and our problem was was the oil. How you done your oil sump at the bottom of the engine because it's completely different to a road bike. In the end. I went down, even though Klaus was opposition to Molly, who I, I got on really well with, and I said to Molly, I said, listen, Klaus has got serious problems, our engines blow up all the time, blah, 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 what can we do? He rooted around in his shelf, come back out, and he said, here. I said, what's that? He said, that's the sump I used in the last time I won a TT on a Honda. Tell him to fit it, and he'll never have a problem with his engine blown up again. And fair enough, we fitted it, and we never had another blow up to be. No, nope. never, never, never ever. He, he was a, he was a top man. He helped them basically oh. win a TT. Yeah, or three. Sorry. Yeah, so then three. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so then, like like uh, Klaus, so you just you know kind of like you, you know easing yourself into the whole scene here now, at this point in time, right? And um, how did you progress then? 
let, let, let's take this in stages here, right? You have an era there, a, you know, a phase where you arrive here, right? And then, well, of course, you win your first TT, but what about between the time you arrive and, and your uh, first TT? How do things progress? You know, up to that stage. Do you keep moving up the, the oh. grid and uh, the bike keep getting better? You get more and more comfortable. You started and you change passengers, all that kind of good stuff. Tell us yeah, about that. Yeah, as I said, when I came first time, that was in 2004. Yeah. I came um, 2001 world champion and then I think I was twice a finished second in the world championship in 2002 and 2003 and then I, I came to the TT and obviously I came to win it you know mm. even don't know what it is but I came to win it and uh, I came with my passenger with Christian Barza which yeah. I, I won the, the world championship and he was my a long long-term passenger in the world championship I also had Adolf Henny in, in the chair with yeah. me yeah. but when I won the world championship and after the two wise champion um, uh, world champions that was Christian Barza and we we came to the Alaman the day before the first practice <laughs> and then took the bike out took the bike on the grid and and got on the f first first lap practice lap yeah and uh, soon like <sighs> two or three <laughs> two or three miles I thought what is going on here that's yeah. It was nothing to do with racing, you know. The bike was shaking <laughs> all over the place. And um, I thought to, my, to myself, I finished that lap back in Ingo, back home to Austria. That, that's not for me. That's stupid, you know. Yeah. But when we came back, I remember exactly when we came back uh, to the start-finish line after one lap, I thought, nah, I carry on one more. Yeah. And then I just fall in love with that. Yeah. The kind of racing, the island... So, and I, I must say, each lap I'd done on, the, on, on that circuit was faster than the lap before. Yeah. Each well, you lap, started to get the groove yeah. So, yeah. I said, I want to win. Yeah, then I changed it a little bit and I said to my family, I want to be on the podium. I start thinking that will be hard to win here because it's, it's not just... You know, doing it, it's it's also all the preparing what is involved in the whole thing, you know. You need, it's everything was special. Nothing to do with what I've done before. And I've done racing before, like 15 years before, because I'm all in my life, I was like racing. Mm -hmm. 2004 was the first year we've been here. And then we carried on and carried on. We had a lot of engine problem, you know. I, I remember one year we had about five engines with big holes in the back of the awning. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I just seen recently um, a German guy put down every German and Austrian guy who did DT, not, not just yeah. sidecars, everything. And we had a lot D DFN, you know, like most of DFNs, but. Chris, Chris Mayu said the one engine we sent back out of all his. Solo riders, he's, he's, he's worked for Honda all over Grand Prix. He's never seen an engine so badly destroyed. So yeah. badly destroyed. The pistons melted, holes in the crank. He said he never seen an engine so badly destroyed. But then we got through and then it came uh, 2009, I had an accident. I clipped a main stone wall. Yeah, ripped my finger off. That was waterworks. That's yeah, um, I remember that. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. near, near Ramsey, Ramsey just come yeah. out. Yeah. Just come out Ramsey. Ramsey. <laughs> and um, I clipped uh, a main stone wall, ripped my finger off. I carried on a few corners and it also bent my gear lever. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't shift. I stopped. And then when I looked down to my hand, the bone sticking through the cloth. Oh, yeah. The glove. glove, glove, yeah. So I collapsed. <laughs> Collapsed. Yeah, yeah, I collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the bone through the. Oh yeah. So yeah. I bump. I and then they finished the race, and then the the road open car took me to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And then, uh, Big, Big H was a travelling marshal at the time. Oh, yeah. Who unfortunately got, as you know, badly hurt, which I think a lot of Big H, but he rang me up and he said, Andy, tell your Austrian puff not to be a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> He's crying over his finger. It's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, but that's, that's what happens at the TT, huh? You know, and, uh, oh, yeah, we got some bad ones here. And then, yeah, and then yeah. oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's used to it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so all right, go ahead, Clive. Yeah. In the hospital, then the doctor said to me, "Oh, there's nothing to do with your finger. We need to amputate it." And I said, "No, we don't amputate my finger now, oh, yeah. because I've got a good friend of mine. He's a, a surgeon. He's, he's a finger surgeon in Austria." And I said, "We ring this guy, and you explain what happened to my finger, yeah. and he makes the decision." So we, we spoke to that guy and um, my friend on the phone and he said, just to that doctor, he said, just fix it. I saw it out in Austria. Yeah. That's what we did. And it's still here. Yeah. It's still. So right though. I mean, you said, wow, that, I wouldn't know. But that, you, that was the baddest accident that I ever had. <laughs> you know, that was, I was going to, you know Not what? too bad then. No, <laughs> no, no, I actually did tell you the truth. If that's the worst accident that you ever had with all the racing yeah. that you've done. Not yeah. too bad. At really the top level. I mean, the TT, of course, but you know, all that, that circuit was... racing that you did, you know, at the very, very top. Yeah. You know, right. <laughs> I mean, you have some good stories there too, I bet. And tell me some the close story call. about when you went into the Austrian round with the levers with the What's it called? The, the leather hosen. Yeah. You had them stitched onto your levers, didn't you? The umpar things. Yeah. That when only a young fellow, weren't you? Yeah. You know the, the Austrian leather hose? Uh, you, you, like you know? an umpar band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you mean like the ho leather hose? Yeah. Thing? The green. Yeah. Yeah. That was just like a marketing thing, you know. Oh, it, yeah. it looked very funny. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, it's like a Marcus Austria. We, yeah, there we, oh. we. Uh, they were stitched onto the levers. Yeah. We used oh, them. Oh, I see. But he was only a young fellow, wasn't he? Yeah. We used it only once in Italy. And it was like everyone was looking at us like, what, what is going on here? You know, well, it, looked, it looked funny. Mm. Yeah. It looked funny. And then it came 2010. And that was the first year we won a TT. You know, I was thinking about because we were uh, getting ready for the show, right? And I, I didn't look up any records or anything. Oh, of course, I've been, you know, we've been friends for a long time. And, uh, you know, I followed you even before we knew each other and all that. It goes way back. But but uh, I was thinking 2010, I said, you know what? I don't remember Klaus being on the podium until that big year 2010. Mm -hmm. And he took the double. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was ever on no. the podium. No, he wasn't. No, 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 no. How many times no, did that happen? I think best result until it was a six or fifth or six. But all the other times we retired. I know. <laughs> I, that's what I was saying. I, you know, that was amazing that you won the double there. And then it looked like you're going to do it again in 2011. And you did the first race. Yeah. You won that. And then and then what happened? on the, you, had, you, had a, you had a breakdown. We won the first race in yeah. the 11, yeah. and then uh, we were leading the yeah. the second race un until last lap. Until the last yeah, lap, that's just, what I just before just before uh, we finish, the water horse came off. The oh, jubilee clip, shoot. jubilee came. <coughs> yeah. bre bre mm. I remember it. Fifty pence jubilee clip broke, yeah. and the hose came off. Yeah, and so. We would have been the first one who, or for a long time, who won... Two on the trot. Two, four, four in the trot. Four, 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 yeah, yeah, four in a row. Yeah. Four in a row, you would yeah. have been. Yeah. Before that, we were struggling as well. Christian Parter retired, and Klaus could not get a passenger, could you? Yeah. And I got this guy from the Isle of Man to fly to... Germany. 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 Oscar's leaving. Klaus rang me up, he goes, nah, this guy's no good. He can't hang on over here. <laughs> I said, okay. He tried another guy. He goes, we haven't got a passenger for the TT, Andy. I said, okay. And then Dan Sale came available. I don't know what had happened. He'd had an argument with his driver. And I said to Klaus, you need to try this guy. He's good. So he flew Dan over and he rang me up and he was laughing. I said, what are you laughing at? He goes, Andy, we have a passenger. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. Dan did mm. help you a lot with the preparation of the yeah. bike, didn't he? 
and learning the course a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Where to change gear and stuff, and that's probably what helped them win the TT as well. It was like a 50 50. Yeah, it? I remember there was guys called them the specialists in Germany. They said, mm. You will never win a TT because that's this was so special and special and you and, and, yeah, and you're awful. a European. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. like no chance, you no chance. And um, but when I got Dan. Yeah, when we teamed up yeah. with Dan, I must admit that he was so helpful because he won before, obviously, with Nick Crow and he won before Molly. with Molly. So yeah. he he know how to win a race. Oh yeah, and that's that's always something, you yeah. know. It helps. You you can you can be good, but to lead or win a race is something different. You yeah. know, you can if to lead a race. And to win it, that's something different uh, compared to being second, third, fourth, mm. fifth, or being top ten right. rider. You know, that's 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 yeah. again on a different level. Right. And Dan, he he knew how to win, and he's a good technician. He's a very good technician. He he helped a lot with setting up, Set the, up bike. the bike. How the yeah. sidecar wheel needed to be in line and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and that probably without him, I wouldn't. Have won a, a TT. I'm. I'm I don't think that. so. I don't yeah, think so. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's that difference, isn't yeah, it? It is. It's a difference between having like Dan on on board, between being number one, and having somebody else that's pretty good, but he's not a Dan, mm. and you might be fifth place. Yes, yeah. right. Close. Yeah. Isn't it? It's the same bike, even. Yeah. Maybe. He's very good technically, and he knew his side what he wanted, and he also helped close a little bit with his side. Which, which is right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. With what is experienced with Molly and Nick Crow and people like that. And they just gelled. And it was a good team spirit that couple of years as well, was. wasn't it? He you know, was. There was Roberto, Gerhard, Klaus, me, Dan. I was looking after sort of Dan. They were like, it was European and Manx, but we all got on well. And yeah. we had a good fun as well, didn't we? We yeah. did have good fun. Yeah, yeah but as, as yeah, just, what, what, what about your business too going on at the same time? Your, your hospitality. Oh, that yeah. Job, uh, that was involved in Manx Gas at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. we had a. That, we, you had that guy. Well, that was all part of the whole scene. Well, that's where sometimes you know what I'm saying? It was part he of the was whole so scene. busy because he did not I just know. work on the bike. He had to go and look after around. the hospitality, come back, come back, and sometimes we were working late at night because he was busy with the hospitality. But that's where Gerhard was really good, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Gerhard looked after him. Yeah, really tell us good. a little bit back, because you know I know Gerhard. He's a good friend of yours, and yeah, like you say, yeah, he he did help out quite a bit. He was in, in fantastic with the electronics, uh, Chris. Yeah, it was fantastic well, like with the electronics. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, electronics. He, he, he Gerhard and looked after yeah. the bike. He was brilliant. Yeah, Gerhard. I yeah. um, in two thousand uh, two, three, four, five, six. I also run a, a superbike team in World Superbikes. Yeah. I was team manager and Gerhard was one of the top technicians there, the leading technician. And I also uh, had some mechanics from that, this days taking over to the Alaman. And um, yeah, we we did it. We he, Gerhard was just like, he's, he's good on, on, on computer and, and you know, on that kind of, of thing, which you have to be yeah. in in these days now. But when Klaus won his, won his World Superbike team, before he won to run the World Superbike team in the 1000cc class, he won a 600 team. Yeah. And oh. you won the World Championship, didn't you? No. I, no, thought, no. I thought the French guy won it. The no, no, the, uh, no, no. What did he call him then? The French guy, Carpenter? Uh, Charpentier. Yeah. No, he, he was a world champion when he left us right. the year after. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah. I got it wrong. <laughs> all right. I tell you what, I think what we need to do, all right, we set the stage here now, right, in our discussion about the leading up and everything. We've talked about your double win in 2010, right? Oh, so happens we have a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, what about we uh, put that on and then I could uh, tweak some memories here for yeah. you, you know? That's good. Okay? Yeah. This is number five. This is Klaus Klaffenbott, Dan Sale. That's a 
the Austro Manx pair. <laughs> yes, did he? Did he? <laughs> yes, uh, Klaus is also as well, the next world sidecar champion as well. So we've got a real strong field here, Jamie. Yep, 2003 world champ was Klaus Klaffenbock on the uh, Formula One outfit. Uh, came to the Isle of Man the year after that in 2004, never on the podium though. No, he always seems to have lots of breakdowns. Last year he caught his hand actually on the, the rocks at, at the waterworks, so with that put him out. That's it, look at this here now. Claffy's, Claffy's closing in here, look at this. He's closing in on Tim Reeves. Yep. So that's him, same again, 14 miles into the circuit and he's closed almost 10 seconds, so he's right on it, right yep. on it. They set off 10 seconds apart and that's a lot less than 10 seconds now, so Klaus Klaffenbock on a charge. Yeah, it's difficult when you're first on the road though, Milky. You don't really know, you've nobody to chase, you've no idea what you're doing until you see your laps in you. Oh, look at that there, that's uh, that's, Cla that's Claffy and Dan going past right outside Dan's mum's house, actually. You uh, can't uh, believe that, can you? <laughs> I tell you, he, might, he didn't have any time to wave to his mum though, did he? Look at that. Straight past there, Tim Reeves, for your run now in towards the entry in towards Sulby Bridge. It doesn't and look to me like Tim Reeves has given up on this one, even though he knows that Clappenbox caught him 10 seconds. Whoa, oh, look out there, look out, whoa. Good move there by Tim. He wasn't letting him have that, was he? So this might be a good little overtaking opportunity he's gonna here. have a go, I think. He's oh, going to have yeah. a go. Oh, he's he got him, he's, he's got him. Close. Whoa, oh, it's too close, <laughs> too close. God. They both went a bit, a bit wide there, sacrificed a bit of speed there, going out through there. Oh, you can just see someone disappearing in the, in the, in the distance there. That must be Simon Neary as well. That, so that Claffy, would be Simon Neary, yeah. Claffy's definitely on it here, definitely on it. Oh, that's a lovely look at that. Keeping the drive coming out of the veranda there. For the run now in towards Bungalow Bridge, this left-hand bend here now. Just have to see how he gets this one. Just comes off the gas there, back on it again. Oh, and he's, oh, he's over the curb, he's over the curb. Yeah, and here's Claffy coming now through, starting his last lap. 37 and three quarter miles, that's all he's got to do until he gets back to the start and finish and hopefully get onto the podium. Yep, nine seconds he had over Dave Molyneux starting this last lap. But at the bungalow, his lead has been cut by Dave Molyneux. Remember, as in front of him, it has been cut to five seconds at the bungalow. Oh, he's going to be close, yeah, this, it's, it's, it's coming down. Like I say, Dave's a terrier. He won't give up, won't give up one little bit. Dave's going to be pushing hard, pushing hard for a local win. And this is Klaffenbock, and he will have signals, so he will know that his uh, lead has been cut by Dave Molyneux. You see the clock ticking there. Just this is going to be close. I tell you. It's longer run than you think from there to the start and finish. That's it, especially on the side as well. It takes an eternity just to get from there back to the start and finish line. Come on, come on, come on. Close, he's got a big close. Look at that. Got, oh, what's that, about got three it. seconds? 2.63 seconds. Klaffenbock hangs on to this win. God, I tell you, that was, that was close, that, wasn't it, Jamie? Oh. You'd think Molly had it. Molly. What's that, about 111, 112 miles of racing? Comes down to less than three seconds. That's unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> this is Klaus Klaffenbock's first podium, and it's a win in seven years of trying. And incidentally, the first non-Manxman to win a sidecar TT since 2003, and the first Austrian to win a TT since Rupert Hollaus. So there, there, there's Claffy. He's been dreaming of this. Claffy is, loves the TT, and yeah, he's he been dreaming and dreaming of getting his victory at the TT. Look yep. at him. Yeah, so here we are, yeah. We're, we're gonna do uh, race two here in a minute. Or so. Well, we can. We'll, we'll take that time, right? We want to hear what uh, you know. Klaus has to say about race one that we just watched. Go ahead. It, it, it is a bit of time since I've seen it last time. It's just goosebumps, and uh, as I said earlier, it's one of one of the best things I ever done in my life, and it's it's difficult to explain it to someone. It's 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 met friends, lifetime friends. And uh, it, it completely changed my life, I would say. So it's something. It's probably made you very, very made special. You, made you a Manx resident now. Me, me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but boy, I was watching that, and then, you know, the clip that we just saw was uh, from the TV. It's a TV clip, is what it is. Mm. And um, the guys on there, we all know each other, right? And of course, they're talking about the top guys. And of course, then we have here uh, Klaus the won the race. But then in mentioning it, you know, we had Molly mentioned, right? Of course, you know, he's a big star. Again, I don't want to go on too much about the, the movie and we're, we're all good friends, right? So we had him mentioned as well. But he had some tough competition. And of course, Tim Reeves. Yeah, we talked Cla about Tim Reeves up against too the as best. well. Cla and he's in a movie yeah. and, one, and, and one, you know, multiple world champion. 
right? I mean, you are against the best, aren't you, Klaus? I mean, this is it. I mean, they specialize, but you do get the best. Fluffy was up against the best opposition. That's what I'm saying. It's been for a long time, than two two years. Right, but but I say it's made more than what there is now. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Like, like I get excited. See why you know I get excited. But I'm saying is that like to win the TT, right? Like you're saying, and I'm just here watching it. I get in goose watching it. Mm -hmm. You know, being around the you guys, and the winners, and all the competitors actually. You know, everybody you know that competes. But yeah. if you win. Well, you get on the podium. In my, my view, it's the ultimate motorsport. Yeah, it I'm, is like, <clears throat> because of the, the challenge of it, mm. how hard it is on, on, the, on the machine, on, on, on the guys in the bike, for the teams. Well, we right? had seven years of trying, didn't we? All the yeah. things that could go <clears throat> wrong. Yeah. And, of course, the danger. Yeah. All the those things. The the, it, it is the danger. But I've done a lot of crazy things in my life, but when I was a kid... I did motocross, you know, mm -hmm. and then when I was old enough, I started racing sidecars on a circuit, and then I did DT. Didn't you get downhill skiing as well? No, ski bop, is it's called ski, ski bop. bop. And mm -hmm. then after I finished with uh, the sidecars, I started car racing, you know. Yeah. But sidecar racing is, is, it is, the best thing, you know. Yeah. It's, it's the best thing. Well, yeah. Well, we don't want to go off on it because we're we're showing the whole world through three wheeling. What a great sport we have, right? And it's getting out there, and yeah. we keep it. Oh, yeah. And we're doing. I mean, we barely scratched the surface because it is so such a great sport. It is. It and it is how to say it's a bit underestimated. Un underestimated. Underestimated. Yeah. 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 Well, and, Especially uh, the TT. The TT is like the world championship. Oh, right? the, the TT. The, Right now, Klaus, I have to ask you again. Right? Yeah, because of all the you were involved with the motorsport. Of course, we're talking about your sidecar racing and the championships you've won, the TT, all this kind of good stuff. But now you're onto the four wheels, right? And all that, which is great. There's great championships on the different classes on the four wheels and all that, right? I love motorsport as a fan, right? But in my view, I'm talking to you as like an expert, right? A guy that's actually done it rather than just somebody just watches, right? But I think the TT is by far, it's the greatest. You know what I'm saying? It is just the ultimate, I think. It is the and ultimate. It, it, it is in all the motorsport. I mean, not taken away from anybody else. Yeah. There's a lot of great. It is the ultimate. It, it is. Yeah. If you win the TT, yeah. it's unbelievable, really. Yeah. Right? I mean, just competing and getting up there, it is something else. Hey, right? Oh, enough of that. What I'm going to do is now, Second we go race. on to race two. You can tell us about that one. Sidecar passenger right behind the driver. Keep that airflow as good as you possibly can. Number five, Klaus Klaffenbach, Dan Sale. Winners, of course, on the Manx gas machine from the first race. Yep, you see when uh, that tyre spins, it pushes the sidecar to the left there, pushes sideways. On board as they go down to the traffic lights at the top of Bray Hill using the right-hand side, and then they'll come across to the left, trying to keep it in the middle of the road as best you can. The outfit goes light over the top there, and then they plummet down this hill, still accelerating all the way. There's number five, Klaus Klaffenbach. Beautifully turned out outfit. We're on board with him. He's our cameraman. But here is the Manx gas machine of Klaus Klaffenbach. Yeah, winner of the first sidecar race. Now holding third in this race behind Holden and Winkle and Simon Neary and Paul Napton. And the bumps here leading up towards Ramsey. This is Schoolhouse Corner coming up in a minute. The uh, sidecar patch will be hanging well out to the left, right over the top of the curb there on the left. Very impressive stuff. Yep, this is number five, Klaus Klopfenbock, climbing the mountain. Good, strong engine. Spends a few quid on tuning this, uh, this 600 Honda motor. Here is the man that's uh, chasing after them. Klaus Klaffenbach and Dan Sale tearing along Solby Strait as he is virtually nine seconds back. The heat haze and everything else bouncing along, but this is the fastest part of the circuit. Yep, round the kink in the middle of the straight and on towards Suburb Bridge and then Ginger Hall. Next stop, Ramsey. Braking hard right down into first gear. These poor old 140 horsepower 
Four cylinder 600s having to work very, very hard up to Ginger Hall there. Yeah, it's all about ballast, but on board with Klaffenbach and Dan Sale, the LCR machine climbs the mountain. Yeah, and this bike's been strong all week up this section. These bikes, they're carrying about 400 kilos. That's a lot. Klaffenbach still looking really good. Dan Sale there, right out of the sidecar outfit. Yeah, and you can see how early he got out for that left-hander. He was set up for that corner way wow. down the straight. Right over the grass there yeah, on the inside yeah, yeah. there. Right over the grass, and that was through Brandish. Of course, no fuel stops. Three-lap race this will be. And this is, uh, this is Klaffenbach. Down the start and finish straight again. Like you said, no fuel stop, straight through on a flyer. A little bit of mid-range at this bike, the number five Honda outfit of Klaus Klaffenbach seems to go up the mountain a little bit better. And here it is, here are the guys that are chasing, and as they go through the bungalow, we will get an idea of what's going They've gone through, actually, word is now it's down to two seconds. Now they've got that agonising wait, because this is the outfit that was in second, two seconds back. Has any more time been made up? We're going to find out in a minute. Klaffenbach there, the clock is ticking, and he's got to be less than 59-53 to take his second win of the week. And we wait for it to stop, he and he's it. done it. He has done it. Just amazing stuff. Two wins in the week. He's never won a TT before. What is that? One second. <laughs> One second. <laughs> well, well, I'm nine seconds down at one stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, Klaus, just tell me any uh, like recollections that you have. On, on race one and race two. Anything come to mind other than, oh, excited about winning. Uh, but what, what's going through your mind, you know, and anything you can remember specifically? You know, with Dan in the chair, we, um, first time he's been out with me at mountain course, he said, you are too aggressive, which that was the style I learned the last 20 years on circuit racing, you know, mm -hmm. being aggressive. He said, that's too aggressive around here. I said to him, if you, I try to be not aggressive, but if you think I am to just squish me on my leg, leg, that's the only part he can reach, you know? So every time I started to go too aggressive, you know, on the break mm -hmm. through a corner, doing like short circuit racing, which is not right here. Yeah. Squeeze me on my leg. And he did a few times. So that was always meaning like I need to relax a bit and not being aggressive. You know? yeah. That's what he did quite a few times in the race <laughs> and it helped, you know, so I, yeah. I learned it. And I remember second race, uh, last lap, I got um, a board in Ramsey saying minus nine second. Yeah. So, and everyone saying before, you know, you don't make 10 seconds over the mountain. That's yeah. imp yeah. impossible. Yeah. But I've seen that minus nine and I, they were saying like, you can't make 10 seconds. So I, I thought to myself, but well, I can make nine seconds. You know? yeah. <laughs> so I tried as hard as possible over the mountain. Yeah. And we did it. Just oh, yeah. Oh, seconds. boy, that was a close. Mm -hmm. I put that one up. I said, raise a thin uh, wind, I think. And, you know, I put it on my channels. Yeah. Both of those. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Up to this, up to this in 2010, I think it was the closest finished ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why we got this stamp, you know. Mm -hmm. There's Alleman issued a issued Alleman stamps. By Dot Tilbury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like stamp. Yeah. The 10, yeah. 10 best. Best races. Best ten races since TT. You know, yeah. like oh, yeah. 103 years at this time. Solos and cycles. Yeah. yeah. And we got one. And you were on because it, yeah. it was one of the best races Pages. ever. Oh yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that too because you know, like you, like you said, 103 years best races, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? Well, you know, talking about this, right? I already did a little like a sales pitch. I got my T-shirt on here. But you know what that is? That's a hundred year anniversary yeah. of sidecar this racing years, years. at the TT. It's coming this year. Well, next year, right? Yeah. We're still, oh yeah. We're still yeah. Two, yeah. 2023, yeah, right? 23, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what do, what do you say? We're going to have some partying, or oh, we we're definitely. Gonna, uh, your, uh, how, how about at your place and we come up here, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah, we, need we to got, celebrate that. Oh, yeah. Hundred years. Yeah, look at that. That's a good years. T-shirt. Unbelievable. Tis, tis, tis. Look at that. Yeah. I guess, yeah, we're going to have all kinds of good uh, merchandise and everything. 
Um, but you should do that with your, you should tell your um, all your guests that you have in your hospitality about it. So make sure that we, we do something special, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, 100, 100 years. 100 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, the site car yeah. race finishes on the Wednesday night. You come on the Thursday, you could have a party up here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I do have the guys come over on uh, Mad Sunday, you know. But the schedule's all changed and everything. I think the, the second race is like on Wednesday, isn't it? Yes, yes, Wednesday. Yeah. So, like I said, Thursday we'll have a party. Over here. We'll have it Thursday. We'll have to switch it. But you know what we got right is all the trains and everything. See, that's another one of my hobbies, the trains, right? Get and out the there. We had some good times on yeah. the trains. And your boat, and the boats. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So we're gonna have a, we'll have a big party up here in my uh, yeah my little. And you won't uh, believe it. He doesn't have the free wheel hat on. Then he puts a bloody Captain Nelson hat. On. Oh yeah, I got hats on all. <laughs> I got all kinds of different hats. Oh yeah, talking about that. Oh, just a little sideline thing, like and everything. And uh, we have some good uh, times and good fun up uh, fun up here. Remember your dad? Just come up here and everything. And then we have Adolf, yeah. which you race with, that you, yeah. uh, you uh, uh, great mates with, that I've become good friends with too. Yeah. He stays with me and all that too. But talking about the hats and all that, we had some good time. We had got some nice shots of all of us. Mm. And your dad, when yeah. he was here, we all had the hats on, yeah. uh, like uh, Napoleon and all this, and Wellington, <laughs> like hats and little, all kinds of freaking good times. Huh? Tyson's fighting tonight, and Caroline, Chris's daughter, sweet. Caroline, that's what oh, Tyson yeah. always sings, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's how Chris got involved because he wanted his daughter to come on the start line and be a grid girl for Klaus. That's how we sort of got involved, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, 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 Very what, nice what? looking girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't what? remember what year that was. Oh, it was your. Yeah. Must have been. You were on the Manx gas bike at the time. Yeah. Got a Honda from mine. Yeah. yeah. And she did. Yeah. But Caroline, yeah. of course, she was, a, you know, uh, she's retired from. From grid girl work, but my she's uh, a mother daughter, now, but she, she was she she's a she was a, she 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 she's did all you know the mother she, she done and the Formula One, one and one, yeah. Yeah. all them, but the biggest one, T T was was a team, right? Yeah, was class team. Yeah, but that was that I think that was with Ben and Tom. Was it? No, I no, think she so. also done it for Klaus when he's in his first T T. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, okay. she did. Oh, she right. did. Did you do for the first T? Yeah, yeah. She did. Uh, she, oh, yeah. And then she oh, we keep it all in the family. He was yeah. their team manager. Oh, yeah. And he rode your bike. They rode yeah. your bike. In the, yeah, in the first. first. Their first win. And they've won yeah. 12 now. <laughs> they have? Yeah. On the Every race they've finished now, they've won 12. They've won every race they've finished. And they've won 12 now. Yeah. And you were involved and I was involved when they had the first TT win. And I think Ben would probably tell you this himself because he's a real nice guy you brought him on a couple of years quicker than what you should have done you helped him win earlier than what you should have done when i started there was no one was helping me you know mm -hmm. everyone was telling you lies mm -hmm. or shut them out the mouth you know mm -hmm. and i had only andy but he never raced the sidecars no so i didn't know yeah mm. but i remember watching ben and tom and the chain come off in the first race, I think they did. In the second race, I think they were seventh. And I knew immediately then they were going to end up TT winners. I just knew it. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I remember. I was, I was, I was, I was right. I, knew he was I was right back of, back at uh, Ben and Tom when they won their first TT. I can't remember what year was that. Was it 2011 or 12? No, it must be 12. 12? Yeah, I can't yeah, remember. So I'm not good with dates, but I just knew they were going to yeah, be two Yeah, mm. but Caroline was there too. We got some nice shots, mm. some nice pictures of all mm. of us, mm. you know, down in the winners. And, you see all those good memories that we all have, huh? All the, mm. the wins and the victories and all that, huh? Mm. Yeah. Wow, so yeah, Great you, time. it's pretty spectacular. Yeah. So, right? Chris, what's the future? Oh, Tell the, us about the future. Oh, the future, we're just going to go from strength to strength. That's what we're doing. You guys all know that uh, Three Wheeling is the um, official title sponsor of the TT, but it's also the media partner, right? So we get all the, the, their footage, you know, and we put together our, all of our videos and then we uh, put them across all of our social media channels and that with all the, the, the COVID problems and everything, right? It should have started a few years ago, but really the first year of our deal that we have with the TT just passed 
this last year, right? But we, we still got three more years, right? Yeah, and our audience keeps getting bigger and better all the time. Yeah, I tell you the other thing is, folks. Yeah, we have some we have some good things behind the scenes going on too. You know, when the the wider media, some of those are going to come to fruition, no doubt about it. Certainly yeah. before you know. Uh, our, our current deal with the TT ends, but I don't think it's gonna end, we're just gonna carry on. So our audience keeps getting bigger and better all the time. Uh, the brand is, is, is known, it's phenomenal across the world. You can see the, the, the stickers on every, every bike, you know, all kinds, right? But we've barely scratched the surface. Was, you know, sidecar race to sidecar, we're all, we're all the same, you know, so we, we bring in all the classes. We got everyone. If you're on three wheels, right? <laughs> you what? You're welcome here, and, and that's what we're here for is to promote you. Yeah. So we'll we'll be we'll be uh, promoting all the guys, you know, all of them. You know, I call them uh, on and off the tarmac. You know, we we'll, we we get everybody. You get Speedway three wheels. Oh, also. I got Speedway. <clears throat> You know, we got you know, cross, yeah, well, track, we got, cross yeah, track. Yeah, yeah. Well, credit to Motor you. Cross, you, you, you. You done a lot. You, you put your lot. ass on the line, doesn't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. You put your ass on the line. Well, I had, I had to do it though. But you know what? I tell you what. You enjoy it, don't you? I enjoy it. Well, it's, 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 it's like your a, hobby. It's a big giant hobby. It's, you know, it's on steroids now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like you know, it's pumped up. You know, you know, talking about Schwarzenegger. You know, we're pumped up here. Yeah, we're pumping up the sport. Yeah. That's what we're doing, you yeah. know. We barely even yeah, scratch the it. surface. You do it. Is yeah, well. is it yeah. So but it's the people in the sport. Yeah, that makes it makes it good. And I tell you what, the appeal of the sport, mm -hmm. and the guys in it, and the and the families that we we all have uh, uh, good good close friends, right? Family, but all the classes are that way. We're all that way, mm -hmm. you know. It's very appealing, I can tell you, mm -hmm. and it, it it sells. I tell you, we're like the fourth or fifth biggest following on uh, Facebook for motorsport in the world. Well, it hasn't been that many years, yeah. you know, so there we go. So onward and upward we go with it. And you know, all of our ambassadors giving out the stickers and doing the three-wheeling logo. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, but oh, I have to start now. See, I'm getting on my sales pitch reel. But talking about Caroline, my daughter, and getting involved being the the uh, Greek girl and everything for yourself, Klaus and all that kind of good stuff, right? But then, right, once I started getting involved and more and more into it then, and, uh, you know, I kind of sponsored you guys, and then I said, right, the movie. Mm. Right? So we're going, see, this is the origins we're talking about, a three-wheeling. Yeah. <clears throat> this is how three-wheeling got all started, is, right? Is. Then I said, I said, I'm just going to do a movie. You know, I never did one movie. This is where I am. And, uh, you know, you never did a movie before. I says, yeah, that's the reason why I want to do it. <laughs> I never did it before. I want to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we go ahead and, so what happens is, right, we all get together. I said, we're going to do a movie, right? You know, Andy's a good friend and everything. Klaus was a good friend. You know, I was hanging around. I was sponsoring and everything. We're going to do a movie now. We're talking about the year 2016. Sure enough, we go ahead. And I said, well, who are we going to have in the movie? Of course, Klaus has got to be in it because... Andy's got to be in it, right? <laughs> right. We already know that. Who else could we have in it? So he said, obviously, you know, our big star here on the island, of course, is Molly. Mm -hmm. So, and then he's a good friend of, of Andy's too, mm -hmm. right? So he said, well, he's got to be in it, obviously. You know, <laughs> he's the king of the road here. Mm -hmm. We have to have Molly. And then, all right, so then who else could we have? So we have to have, because you had retired, right, uh, Klaus, right? But you had... Tim Reeves. And then, oh, yeah, that's what I'm Tim saying. Reeves. Then we had we had to get another guy in, so Tim would be the obvious. Mm. You know, Tim was the obvious. Yeah. Mm. You know, so yeah. uh, this is this is what we did. So we got yeah, we and got then, the guys. And you put uh, like bloody good film together. And then you remember we we did uh, Germany. Oh yeah. Uh, showing Austria. it in a cinema, and oh, then yeah. we showing it in Austria. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. That carpet should... job. Yeah, red, yeah. red carpet. It was good, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. The Austrian was oh, good. Was we, 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 we got some on there we're going to put on there. Oh, the Austrian thing was big, yeah. huge. Red Munich carpet. was big. Munich was big too. The, but, but, but Austria was just like, just blew the red the carpet. Away, the, the, yeah. the, the, the actual TV company was there, wasn't it? Yeah. From, from Austria. Yeah. yeah. Interviewing us all. 
Yeah, yeah so uh, it was good. We had a lot of good time, a lot of good fun doing it, and uh, we still sell the the movie. Everybody go watch it. You know, Christmas time is a good one to bring bring out that movie. If you're out there, you know, go, go ahead and you can order the DVD with a Blu-ray, or you can get a download. You know, if you Amazon you can too. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon too. You can Amazon download too. it. Where? And it's on Amazon, Amazon too. Yeah. 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 It's on Amazon as well. My friend watched it the other day. He said it was brilliant. Yeah. He'd never seen it before. He said it was brilliant. We're going to show a little bit of that now. Okay. Mm -hmm. About the movie and yeah. everything. All right. So why don't we go ahead and uh, oh, we have like we start off with some of the characters, right? Okay, put her on. Because after that, I had my own team. Even I, I was really scared when they are on the track, you know, because I know how dangerous it is. And then, by then, I understand my, 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 my family, you know, what they're going through, through a TT. But when you're doing it, you know, you feel so self-confident, you know. Nothing can happen to me. It's only a very small close-knit team, but that's the way we like it, the way we work. Dave doesn't like being here, you know, in the middle of it all. He just likes to do his own little thing, and it works for him, it works for us. And he's not just a good passenger, he's good to help with the setup. If he comes in, he can tell Dave, we need to take a click off there, we need to alter the wheel. You know, it's, he's very clued up. We know how to handle Dan. We get the best out of him. So, like I said, on paper, it should be a dream team. We're here for the three-wheeling premiere in Austria. There's going to be two showings of the film. 520 seats have been sold. They've been sold out for weeks now. The atmosphere is pure and can't wait to see the movie. We came here just to see the, the premiere because we are also involved in Zyka racing. We've had two premieres before this, but this one here is a few times bigger. Our local hero, Classy, Klaus Klaffenbach. He's here, also one of the stars in the film, Andy Farragher. At Adolf, Annie, that race with Clappy. He came all the way up from Switzerland. We've got Lee Johnson, famous TT solo rider. We've got locals here. We've got Austrian rider, Julian, drummer. Of course, Willie Carney. But he's here, badges and all. It's just the excitement of the sidecars. There's never been a film like this. It's so close and personal with the guys. There's been no expense spared in making it. So it is a pie class cinematic film. You can really feel all the emotions from the disappointments and also the, the great success afterwards. It's just really good to see everything. Chris, somehow he found out how to get the complete full atmosphere of this perfect race. It's really a good documentation and brings across the whole emotions of the TT and all the ups and downs you can have in those two weeks. To see the onboard videos, it's really good to see uh, how the suspension works and uh, the engines. This is just crazy. You can recall the emotions you have there. So I really get sweating hands, really get up, beat my heart. And, and for all the spectators who are not there, could get really good across those feelings. Everyone came out was a wow because they love the film. For me, it's it's just passion, just perfect and pure racing. I've really, really enjoyed it. It's a must see, a great experience. Fantastic, you couldn't ask for more. Chris Beaumont paid out of his own pocket. He's done a fantastic job and he's trying to help our sport get recognized better. And I admire him for that. Right now we've got great momentum. We have lots of other platforms that we use primarily on social media to get the word out about our great sport. And we have great ground support from the board itself. We have fans out as far as uh, the South Pacific. This is massive how popular sidecar racing is in Europe, Austria, Germany, even Checo. It's, it's big. And it was a great event. It was a real pleasure to be here with more than 500 people and it was great. Absolutely great. Yeah. Well, how do you like that, folks? That's exciting watching that, don't you think? Yeah, Pretty I'm excited watching that again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Chris, we need three wheeling two now. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, uh, you, everybody keeps asking about that. Oh, yeah, you have oh, to. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think, you know what? I think we will do three-wheeling, too. And uh, I tell you, we're doing it the right way, though. 
we're building our audience first. Because mm. then we can just, we can sell uh, Three Wheeling 2 to them. We're at the audience already, right? We have all the platforms, you know, and uh, we'll do it that way. We're, you know, when we did Three Wheeling 1, it was just like I said, I woke up, I've always been that way. I'm going to do something I haven't done before. I'm going to do a movie. You never yeah. did a movie? I don't know how to, yeah. I did it. So, and it was a big hit, you know, it's been a big, yeah. on what it is uh, about that movie, Klaus, and because it is so good, it is so well known, it's re really shaking some trees behind the scene in the bigger media world. Shaking it's getting trees around. Yeah. The scene. yeah. <laughs> shaking some trees. We're shaking it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was shaking those trees. But carry like, on there's shaking some coconuts are coming down. Carry on shaking the trees. Yeah. yeah. No, so, we, me, I'm up for, for no, three for, million for two. But Andy, see, you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Look what we did with one. Can you imagine what two's going to be? There's not going to be any theaters oh, big we, enough to hold us. You know? if, <laughs> you know, three three well, million two, have we, have, uh, we have one team on the great, and yeah. Have to. Huh? Have to. Yeah. Have yeah. to. <laughs> have oh, to. Yeah. Yeah, so any case, but oh, that, that was great fun. But 2023, I'm involved with Molly again. But yeah. I honestly love it because he's a manxman. He's like the Joey Dunlop of the oh, yeah. side Psych cars. Oh, yeah. And we're using the Austrian engine, <laughs> the KTM again. So I'm looking forward to 2023, especially being the 100th year of the, of the sidecar racing. Yeah. And Dave's probably... Well, he will be the most successful sidecar racer of the 100th TT. Oh, yeah. Because he's won 17. He's had 30-odd podiums. And I enjoy working with him. He's become a great friend. And Klaus gets on with him really well. And uh, I think next year it'll be interesting because the KTM is going better. We've got a lot more improvements. And also... He's got a chance of a podium, any any rider has, because anything can happen to... Uh, yeah. Like Klaus knows, you can have breakdowns, uh -huh. whatever. But I tell you what, though, right, Klaus and, and, and Andy? Boy, I tell you, we, we got some really top guys up there. We have the older guys and we have the younger ones. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking the top, you know, four or five guys. And you know, John, really, they're, they're really coming on now. You know, some of, the, some of the guys, you know, you have, you, you have Pete Founds, you have our, our, our local fans. crow boys Crows, coming up, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And of course, then you still have, you know, Ben and Tom, which are really the reigning, reigning champs from Ben for some time now. But we're uh, missing Molly. Alan fans Molly, last Molly's year. Gonna Mo be, Molly's still going to be up there. The, the first time on the KTM, he got a fourth here. Yeah. The, two right? fourths. Was two it two fourths? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's... And we're missing Alan fans up last year because yeah, he was injured. Right. And he's still he's a coming bloody, on. bloody good yeah. rider. Alan will be in there. His other brother... He done so well this year, and the crows were phenomenal, weren't they? Yeah. Phenomenal. Oh phenomenal. yeah, those boys are. Th those they're boys gonna be, are just they're gonna be some boys world. in the future. Some boys you know? in the future, without a doubt. Uh, but there's a lot of younger ones coming up that are really good John too. John Holden's son starting. Oh yeah, I've so, I've talking. You know, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's yeah, what you need. He, young, he's in the spirit, young, you know that kid. You know, you, you need know, young guys George coming Holden, up. Right, you know, John. Now, for those that don't know, John Holden, you know, he's he's one of these. One of the guys that's been around a long time is you know one of the very very top racers, mm -hmm. and then, and Klaus competed against him. He's won a, a few TTs as well, you know. But the son George, right, right George, I'm talking to you now. And he signed up as a U.S. A three wheeling ambassador. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we got him behind. The, yeah, we got another recruit there. Another another guy is going to be, a, you know, challenging he's, he's a in a few runner. years. He's yeah. done well in the F1, he's doing well in the F2, and he's going to do the TT, because I think, I think he's approached Molly to alter a bike he's bought for him to do, make his TT debut next year. Yeah. But you need young riders coming up, don't you? Mm. you you've got yeah. to have these young oh, riders yeah. coming up. If not, it's going to go downhill. Yeah. But there is young riders coming up, like we said, George Holden, Crows have been phenomenal, and you've got the Found Brothers, and you've got other guys coming through. That's, what we, some need. Good, That's what we need. You know, like uh, Jacko. Michael he, he's Jackson. Good. He, he's, he, Jacko, Mike, uh, he's good. And he's got, you, and you know. Jake. You know. Jake, mm -hmm. Jake, you know. Well, he's got pedigree, right? He Explain has. Jake. Yeah, he <laughs> he's Jake's a good he kid. Has. we got some other ones that are just starting off. You know, that's what we need. Though, time, it? It's but, what we uh, need to keep the, the sport going, and that's that's what Dave's attitude was with the twin cylinder was to make it cheaper for the guys 
because 600s aren't getting built anymore yeah. and they're so expensive to buy now. We used to buy a, a 600 engine for two and a half thousand pound off a scrapyard. Now they're a lot more money and a lot more money to tune them. The twin cylinder, you can buy them. And I'm not just trying to publicize this, I'm just being honest. Dave's attitude was, and I agree with him, and some of the other sidecar guys do it now as well. You can get a twin cylinder, they're so reliable, and you haven't got to spend so much money on them. In the future, I think it will sort of eventually take over the BMW, Ducati, you know, KTM. They're making them bikes, so they will go forward. Yeah. So, okay, well, this is a good time to close, but what we're going to do is everybody stay on because what we're going to do is to run a couple of the longer clips. I think it's race one and race two of the movie, right? Mm -hmm. So we can break now, but everybody stay on and watch some of the movie, right? Okay? So how do you guys enjoy the tonight, all right? Three wheel, all right let's, go, let's give you the... Give it a three months on. Okay, guys. Really enjoyed tonight. Yeah, it was really good. And nice again, to chat to you. Yeah. Same, thanks for All having right. us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay, put yeah. the hand out again. Three wheeling. By the sport, for the sport. It's weird, you, 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 you get yourself ready, you go up onto the line. It's, it's, it's a real horrible feeling. It's like you're saying goodbye to everyone. It's, uh... You know, you line up and it, it's, the worst, it's the worst bit of the whole TT. As soon as you, the, the worst bit is from when you arrive in Park Ferme to go to the line and then when you're on the line. We all happy. All the people around you that, that have been with you all week and your family and your friends and your kids and and you that that them five six minutes before you get pushed through the the barrier where you know it's a minute to go it's it's, it's hell really you you, you could uh, yeah it's like it's literally the, the the way to explain it it's like you're saying goodbye to everyone and you like you're not coming back and unfortunately it does happen sometimes and uh, we've been lucky enough it's not happened to us and hopefully it won't happen in the future. Conditions are absolutely perfect. <laughs>
All eyes on Ben and Tom Birchall. Of course, no Dave Molyneux. John Holden and Andrew Winkle, Tim Rees and Patrick Ferrance, Ian and Carl Bell. In third place, Tim Reeves, he's just half a second down on the virtuals. Goodness, that's close. Next machine in, that's Ian and Carl Bell. That's Carl Bennett and Lee Kane, the number 12 outfit of Matt Dixon, Sean Parker. 26 safely through, the Dwight Beer and Ben Finns. Let's go to Ramsey. Roy Moore. John Holden and Andy Winkle lead here at Ramsey by six seconds over the Birchall brothers. Now, what is the difference between Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance? Because they're here now. And they've dropped to eight seconds behind Tom and Ben Birchall. No, he's dropping right back. He's eight seconds behind both of them. Bit of a misfire on that one, I feel, as it goes away from Ramsey Hairpin. Misfire. Holding on to third place, though. Yeah, it's in third place. Not 20 seconds beyond Ben and Tom, though. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, so he's got definite issues. issues. It's not revving out. I think it's getting to a certain rev range and then just kind of misfiring. So he's dropped down to 39 seconds now behind Holden and Winkle. And that is an indication that all is not well with that, but he'll be trying to nurse it round. Red. It's red. Well, it, it, is the red flag up? Definitely. Or... It, it, it stood there with it on, on the track. Well, with yeah, the red it, flag? Yeah, with the red flag. OK. So, so yeah. it's full cross red. Yeah, we've got a, we have got an incident, we're being told, at Wren Cullen. An incident at Crash Red Cullen. Cullen. So they've gone through there, haven't they? Yeah, they're in bungalows. Yeah. We get it. There's a red flag. Certainly this race here is going to be stopped. Twice, no, I didn't, yeah. did it? Fuck it. What, and you had to try and push it on? What, what, what's happened? Going red flag. Yeah, red colour. It's got no go at all. We were watching you, you're just going backwards. Take take the fairing off. Where's, where's the box? Who's got the box? Grab Tibes, grab, uh, grab, grab a screwdriver at the box. That's right. It's not as good as the other engine as the other engine. It had a full fucking field though. It's not as good as the other Yeah, but did you not fit it? You just didn't have no punch, did you? Keep calm, keep we calm. We have a red flag going out here at Ramsey, but uh, we've been kind of a part of that decision one time before when they, remember Guy Martin, I think the race was on, and they definitely got an instruction for the red flag to go out here at Ramsey. You can download it, see how fucking... What's the number like? Yeah. When I was driving, when I was riding it, yeah. I settled from here, yeah. when I got to... Like, where did it get? I felt it go. It, 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 it was pulling strong, and it was pulling strong until I got to Greaver Bridge. Yeah. As I came out of Greaver Bridge, it started to go, and it, and it just like dropped off. I thought, I thought it was going to seize up. I thought, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it lost a load of power, yeah. Just went on, it went right off. Yeah, brand new. I never had it popping. No, yeah, you know that year me and Dave broke down? I heard it coming down out of the mountain. I heard it just start, and I could hear it every time, and then we stopped it. At that first moment in time, you, you're just looking for a way through the debris field. And um, you just know, you know, that's one of them, lads.
we rode through. And then you're, and you, you're riding along and you're thinking, a couple of yellow flags and they're okay. If we see a green flag, then they're okay. But then it was yellow after yellow after yellow. And it was blatantly obvious then. And that was just, somebody's been really hurt. So we all came back to the paddock. Um, and again, the atmosphere is just... We're a very small collective of riders, so we all know each other. Um, so when something as bad as that happens, it's, it's heavy. Dwight knew what it was all about. Uh, him foremost, I mean, he moved completely and moved here for his dream. And he fulfilled his dream as well. And uh, we all go out there every day and just hope that that doesn't happen to us. Spins is okay. Because it's really hard, you don't know what to say. So I just dropped him a message saying, didn't want to say, but hope everything's all right, get well soon. It's very heavy. And it is hard. But you get over it. As we all know it's there, it's part of the sport. That's a full restart of the Shaw Sidecar Race 1 coming up. We could hear the bike was misfiring. But finding a problem like this takes time. Obviously a restart and a new ball game, etc., etc., for these sidecar crews. But again, just back to the point we had right at the start of this, uh, we have no Dave Molyneux. So a real opportunity for some of the other crews challenging for the podium. Certainly it must be difficult for the boys to get back on the start line again. Helicopter overhead can only mean one thing. There's action fast approaching. It is number two, the virtuals and the gearbox. A little bit of a slide at the back end, but he puts the power on, straightens up away from that, and he is safely through on his opening lap. Next machine interview, that is the number three outfit of uh, John Holden and Andy Winkle, and the virtuals have got the drop on him on the opening lap, only by a second, but the virtuals take it. But this is a very fast approach from Jim Reeves. Tim Reeves visibly quick on the way in, but not smooth enough to make an impression on the leaderboard. It's still the virtual setting down the quickest time. Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance, they sound well, they look well. Here's Ian and Carl Bell now getting through. Ben and Tom Virgil. Uh, 23 seconds cover the top four of the grandstand. Let's see if anybody's been able to make any changes in the nine or so mile run out to here. Here are the virtuals now, very quick indeed, and looking more determined this time than they were on the first lap of the original start. Reeves and Ferranz are here with us now, but as they start the mountain climb, you can still detect that misfire in the outfit. Tim Reeves, he's shaking his head. Whatever his problem was, it's not being fixed in time for the restart. Retirement for Ian and Carl Bell, which promotes Tim Reeves back up to third place. Bit of a misfire on that one, I feel, as it goes away from Ramsey Hairpin. And we did notice that the bells did not go through uh, the lap bridge. I can hear them, I can see the helicopter, here they go. And the new fastest sidecar team around the TT course, Ben and Tom Birchall, a new lap record, 116.798, taking the record away from Dave Molyneux. It's not been his day today. 
So the three pre-race favourites are running away from the rest of the field, but have uh, Reeves and Ferrantz got a problem? Across the line, it's listen. Oh, it sounds rough, that. It sounds like that's misfiring there. Colin uh, Buckley and Robbie Shorter stopped at the pits did the uh, Carl Cox Motorsport outfit. Here with the race leaders, and it's a 10-second advantage. The Birchills have retired at the Solby Crossroads. So now it's John Holt and Andy Winkle now, who probably will have seen the Birchills stationary by the side of the road. Dramatic last lap here in the sidecar, or restarted sidecar race. What is it going to be? Number four, Tim Reeves and Pat Ferrance, they're still hanging in there. Bike doesn't sound well, but it's still hanging on to third place. John Holden and Andrew Winkle making that mountain climb. Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance are overdue here now at Ramsey Hairpin. just been informed that Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance have retired at Glen Duff. That is the, the long straight going down from out uh, on the western side. There's number eight. Yeah, when you when you park up at the side of the road, anywhere around the circuit round here, it's just it's a, it's a massive deflation. So it wasn't it wasn't a great feeling. I mean, I was surprised we kept on getting uh, pit boards all the way around. We knew we weren't going to win from sort of like halfway around the first lap because it was just getting progressively worse. Um, but no, I was I was surprised we kept on getting pit boards saying P3, 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 and it's just like I couldn't understand how we were still in P3 because it was. The, the misfire was really quite bad and um, yeah so it wasn't it wasn't a great feeling for the race because practice had gone really well we were second fastest overall after practice and we were really quite confident but it's just it's just one of them things it was just a, a broken earth terminal on the on the quick shifter and that was it that was enough to to put you out of the race at the, at the end it just just unfortunately it's it's the the nature of the tt you can prepare as much as you want before but nothing ever ever prepares you for the actual TT no matter how much testing you do how much preparation you can do um, you could only prepare so much and you can think everything's perfect and then this place will throw something completely different at you that's never happened before um, so yeah just one of them things unfortunately but that's a TT well, I don't think you'd ever get comfortable being around here because it's actually a lot more bumps this year. I think all the riders uh, and drivers would tell you that uh, it's, it's getting really hard on the machines. You know, yeah. there's been a lot of DNFs exactly and right. uh, there's been uh, a few crashes, as we know. It's not the fact that we're not trying, but this is what's going on out there. It just seems to be a little bit harder this year, uh, especially on rider and machine. But it's, for, it's the same for everybody. Yeah, right. So, you know, whoever's getting through and, and getting on the podiums are, yeah. are doing really well. You know, it's, it's been phenomenal to see this. And look at that fist pump from Mr. Winkle there in the outfit. He knew they'd got the victory. John Holden and Andy Winkle take it. Chaser, 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 chaser. 2011, they won TT number one. Five years later comes win number two. And they are going to thoroughly enjoy that. Chaser, chaser.
Yeah, John was a little bit nervous for the start of this. It's win number two at the TT for John Holden and Andy Winkle. Fantastic. Well, the fog has finally cleared, so let's get ready to race. Disastrous TT by his standards, 17-time winner and all-time sidecar legend Dave Molyneux is looking for another win today. Some say he will be out for revenge. And it's the man that everyone's been talking about this week. Molyneux knows the track better than anybody around here, but how will he get on today? Not only will he want the win, but is more than capable of pushing and taking a new lap record. That distinctive and self-designed red outfit will once again have clear roads ahead of him. Well, it's kind of an unwritten rule here when Molly's in the outfit, do not disturb. 17-time winner Dave Molyneux, the most in history. Eight-time TT winner Dan Sale. I bet you wish sometimes Dave wasn't running when you were racing here anyway. Well, uh, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to come and get me some Hot as a smoking gun So get ready, cause here I come what you gonna I'm gonna rock you Drops, Molly and Dan, lap record holders Ben and Tom Birchill. Race one winners underway now. And Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrant. Quickest off the start line. Now here, bike engines. Here's the first man on the road. It's Dave Molyneux. Molyneux and Sale lead Holden and Winkle. Birchill's a third. Reeves and Ferrant's fourth. The Bell's fifth. Molyneux and Sale now at Balap Bridge. Nothing between uh, Dave Molyneux and John Holden. So at Balap Bridge, Holden has managed to take the lead from Dave Molyneux. Tenth of a second difference between Adam and John Holden by a tenth of a second. Well, I can assure you that the passenger working hard to keep that back wheel down as they go left, right, left, right, and fuse. But the news from the bungalows, Molyneux and Sale, but only by one and a half seconds from the Virgils. With John Holden and Andy Winkle just a fraction of a second down in third. What a race we're having here. <laughs> and now coming up on two out of uh, Governors and on to Glen Crutchy Road are the leaders, or are they? It's that tight. It's going to have to call it when we look at the screens. Dave Molyneux and Dan Sale will be coming into view. We can see the television helicopter hovering, and here they are, crossing the line now. It's Molyneux and Sale who lead, but it is a slim, slim margin with the virtuals screaming along. Something red comes towards me at high speed. It's Dave Molyneux. The virtuals go through. They hold the lead here. Their statement of intent from those two right from the very start. What a race! 
So what will it be now? Number 35, I think, is the second of these machines in the view, but there's three of them absolutely together. Nine, 35 and eight, oh dear. He didn't half give him a shove up the back. It's a retirement, 35. That retirement might be medical more than technical, I would suggest. Yes, obviously putting the hammer down, and you would bet on Dave Molyneux to do that. The Birchills are on the move. And here they are at Ramsey Hairpin, and it's his number one. They are in view. They will be in view. And it's Holden and Winkle who should be here next. They appear to be dropping time, but the engine's still revving well. So that is where it all starts to get tense. Chills. Two teams here, and that is Dave Molyneux and Dan Sale safely through, but just stay across the line out of the corner of my eye, I can see the Birchills. I think we're going to see something a little bit quicker as Tim Reeves and Patrick Barantz flash by in front of him. Are both here, the Birchills and Molyneux and Sale. The Birchills have taken the lead from Dave Molyneux. Uh, leader on the road should be Dave Molyneux, but he was being chased down hard by the Birchalls. It's not Dave Molyneux, it is the Birchalls. The Birchalls lead on the road, a disaster maybe for Molly. And uh, not a good sign to see him missing here and being plagued with mechanical problems all week. Hey, you don't know the whole that. The Birchalls now are out on their own. Uh, so Dave Molyneux not made it through to Glen Helen on his final lap and uh, everybody is going to shuffle up a place. Tim Reeves, Patrick Ferrand safely through here on their final lap. So he's made a second up on the run. On the final lap, the Birchalls lead John Holden and Andy Winkle. I can hear some engine noise. Tim Reeves and Pat Barrens are there in third place. Fourth place for Carl Bennett and Lee Kane. They are one minute and seven seconds down on Reeves and Ferrand, which shows you the pace at the top of the trace. They lead John Holden and, and Tim Andy Reeves Winkle. and Pat Barrens are there. They'll need to start thinking about machine conservation now to try and nurse that bike around. It can only be Ben and Tom Birchall, I would think, coming towards us here now, outfit number two, and probably fully aware that they've extended lead now. It was boiling up into a bit of a battle there, but now extended lead by Tom and Ben Virgil. On to Glen Crutchley Road should be our winning sidecar crew. Checkered flag is out. I can hear the machine coming into view. And yet a claim as they cross the line. Ben and Tom Virgil are fourth. TT victory for the Mansfield duo. A warm applause rings out from the grandstand. Yeah, just crossing the line right now. That is Reeves and Ferrance in third. 18.4 down on Holden and Winkle. Such a disappointment last Saturday, but they have the lap record and their fourth TT win. Thank you. Sorry about that, that's Reeves you coming in, just, just spoiling your moment there. Congratulations. Yeah. Well done, mate. I've, I've got a big star under my leg. I'm not making excuses, but that's it. You're all right, mate. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Still the fastest on 
through the uh, speed trap. You were? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All three laps passed it through the speed trap. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, so much. Okay. And the winners of the Shaw Sidecar Race 2, fourth time on the top step, Ben and Tom Moon.